Hi, my name is Brittany Yasek, and the topic I'll be discussing today is pain management, the ethicality of pain management, and specifically in the face of today's opioid epidemic. Um, I learned a lot throughout my research of this topic, specifically concerning the background and the history of pain itself. Um, our perception of pain has evolved over time, but it actually dates back to the 1600s with Descartes' theory that pain is merely the result of a physical external stimulus received on the skin on the outside of our bodies and then transmitted to one specific portion of our brains via nerves in our spinal column. Um, further theories on pain would evolve over time. However, they would all be similar in that they were simply physiological in nature. None of them really addressed the psychological or the emotional toll that pain does have on us as human beings. In the United States, discussion would continue um, in the 1940s to 1960s as a lot of war veterans were complaining of chronic pain from their war-sustained injuries. As conversations continued to develop in the United States, the 1980s presented a problem with cancer patients. Um, doctors were talking about how cancer patients were in desperate need of pain management. And so some drugs began to be developed um, specifically for the treatment of cancer pain. These drugs were designed to be used in tandem with multimodal treatment plans, not just as a simple quick fix. Um, however, in the 1990s, um, talk around pain would really change. Uh, for the first time, instead of just being a physiological issue, people would finally recognize the psychological and emotional components to pain. Um, people don't always behave socially the same way that they would when they're not in pain, um, as well as different cultures perceive pain differently. So. The opioid epidemic would unfortunately take off here due to a couple of things. Um, for one, the social climate, uh, people were still really reeling from the AIDS epidemic at this time. And there was a group of people who believed firmly that those struggling with pain due to AIDS um, were deserving of that pain. They felt that it was pain as punishment for their behavior, their bad behavior. Um, However, there was also people who recognized that they were suffering from AIDS and illness and were deserving of pain management and treatment and relief, just like any other person. Additionally, um, Bill Clinton was president and he had begun to propose some universal health care plans. Um, Discussion was really ramping up and being had in a different way than it had been before, again, due to this psychological, emotional element. And uh, unfortunately, pharmaceutical companies took notice of this. So Purdue Pharma came out with the drug oxycodone. Um, unfortunately, they would go on to do very well. Um, they incentivized their physicians with extravagant gifts and vacations really pushing and marketing this drug. Um, physicians would go on to prescribe oxycodone in abundance, but not without discretion. They looked to the research to ensure safety and efficacy for the new drug, just like they would at any other time. Um, unfortunately, the research studies that they turned to were put out by the American Pain Society, which not coincidentally was funded by Purdue Pharma. Um, this brings me to some of the ethical issues and topics that I discussed in my paper, the first of which being conflict of interest. So not only did Purdue Pharma and the American Pain Association both stand to benefit financially from oxycodone doing well, creating conflict of interest on both parts, um, physicians also accepted extravagant gifts um, in return they would buy the, you know, they would buy the drug, they would get these extravagant gifts, and then they would prescribe them to their patients. Um, even though they realized it was safe, this is still a conflict of interest. Um, additionally, the principle of veracity was definitely violated. Um, not only were these research studies incorrect, they, it would come to be known that they were intentionally falsified. So the American Pain Association violated their duty to uphold veracity or honesty um, by 
intentionally falsifying their research studies. Um, the research studies initially showed that oxycodone had very little side effects, was extremely effective, and that it had little to no addictive qualities. Um, conversely, the reality of the drug is, though it is effective, it is intended for use in with, along a multimodal treatment plan, and it's highly addictive. So unfortunately, by the end of the 1990s, thousands of people had overdosed and died due to um, prescription drug overdoses, and thousands more were left with debilitating addiction. This would mark the end of the first wave of the opioid epidemic and begin the second in the early 2000s as all of these people left with addiction were unable to get their opiates pharmaceutically. Um, they were no longer being prescribed in abundance uh, because the realities of the drug had been brought to light. However, they needed something, so they turned to street drugs. Um, in the second wave, heroin, and in the third wave, we are currently facing fentanyl. Um, this brings me to my next ethical principle, non-maleficence. Unfortunately, um, pain, pain medication was prescribed and did harm to our patients. So that was a violation. Um, however, at the time it was thought to be safe. Now, however, now that we know that it is not safe to prescribe in abundance, that it does have the potential to cause addiction um, and has other harmful side effects as well, we have a duty not to harm our patients and to prescribe with caution. Um, we also know that the drug was intended to be used along with other methods of pain relief in a treatment plan, a comprehensive treatment plan. So it is our duty to ensure that we are responsibly prescribing and administering this pain medication. Um, my next principle is the principle of autonomy. Um, people have the right to make their own decisions when it comes to their bodies and when they are properly educated about the risks and benefits, they are able to weigh that and make choices for themselves about their body. Um, in some cases, this means not taking opiates. Um, unfortunately, as frustrating as it may be, some people may opt not to. Um, there's a lot of stigma surrounding opioids at this point in time. There's some research, research to show that cancer patients actually refuse pain management as they feel a lot of shame and guilt surrounding it. Um, however, this is their autonomous right and we need to respect that. At the same time, this is complicated because we also have a duty to uphold beneficence, um, the duty to do good for our patients. So it's really important to balance this as not only do we need to ensure that we are addressing the pain of our patients, but that we're doing it responsibly. Um, and that's gonna look different for everybody. Um, it's definitely not a cut and dry issue, but it does pertain to my specific field of interest, which is ultrasound. I'm in the ultrasound program to be a diagnostic medical sonographer, and my code of ethics clearly states my duty to uphold autonomy, dignity, safety, and comfort of my patients. And taking all of that into consideration as far as pain management is concerned, I, while I won't be prescribing the medication, I do have a duty to make sure that my patients are comfortable and not in an overt amount of pain. And so it'll be very important that I communicate with them and then communicate with their um, ordering physicians so that they are aware both of this person may be experiencing some addictive tendencies and need some help and also to make sure that they receive the pain management that they need, that they get relief if they are truly in pain and that if that can be done in a safe way. Um, there is a lot of disparity um, around people receiving pain management, specifically those lower down on the economic scale as well as minority communities tend to receive a lot of bias when they ask or state that they're in pain and they end up not having their pain treated and that is unethical as well. That violates our duty of beneficence to do good for our patients. Um, I will leave you with two questions concerning this topic. 
Firstly, do you feel there is ever a time when it is okay to administer pain medication if someone states that they do not want it? We have a duty to make sure that our patients are not suffering and not in pain, but do you think that there's ever a time where it is okay knowing that we could solve and relieve that pain to not treat it? Um, secondly, um, do you think it is ethical to deny pain medication to a patient who is educated about the risks and asks for it? Um, they do have a right to treat their body how they see fit. However, we still have a right to, or a duty to really be responsible. So what do you guys think about that? Um, thanks so much for watching my video and have a good night.